Jocko Willink is an ex-Navy SEAL, entrepreneur, and best-selling author. In 2015, he and his right-hand man, Leif Babin, wrote a book about what it takes to be an effective leader. This book, called Extreme Ownership, uses stories from their days serving as Navy SEALs in Ramadi, Iraq, as well as from their days as business consultants, where they helped struggling business leaders become extraordinary ones. At its core, extreme ownership is taking responsibility for everything that affects your life. This means saying that it's my responsibility, even when it may not be. This prevents you from falling into a victim mentality and puts you in a position to take control of your circumstances and make changes in your organization and life. For example, it's my responsibility that I got wet. I could have paid better attention to my surroundings or made a greater effort to let her know that I was here. This translates over to business as well. Next time that a project fails or a team member isn't doing their job, Tell yourself it's your responsibility and ask yourself what you could do better next time. Could you have provided better training or help them to better understand what the purpose of the mission is? Although you should take responsibility for things that go wrong, you should bestow the honor of success onto the members of your team. By doing so, you will build greater trust with your team and they will follow your example of extreme ownership, causing a culture of extreme ownership to form in your organization. This culture can only help your team improve because each member will be taking responsibility for what happens and making a greater effort to improve. But what if you just have a bad team? Jocko and Leif explain that there are no bad teams, only bad leaders. What you preach won't get your team to change, what you tolerate will. If people are underperforming, they will continue to do so until you no longer tolerate it. You as the leader must constantly push your team and encourage them to improve. If someone refuses to improve, no matter how much you push, train, and encourage them, then they may not be a good fit for your team and a danger to the mission. Before others will follow you to accomplish the mission, you must believe in it yourself. Others can sense if you don't believe in it, and they will develop a work ethic that matches your belief. As a leader, it's your job to understand the assignment that you've been given and how it aids the higher mission. This means stepping back from the details so that you can see how it fits into the whole. Once you do, you'll be able to believe in your assignment and help others to do the same. Because once they understand the why of the mission, they'll believe in the how. Chances are your team isn't the only one in the organization. It's easy to feel in competition with the other departments. This attitude can prevent other departments from doing their job and keep them from providing you support that you need to accomplish the mission. Do your best to help the other departments in your organization so that you all will better be able to accomplish the mission. Remember, the enemy is out there. When you're part of a larger organization, it's easy to play a game of telephone where the leader at the top of the organization says one thing, but what you hear is completely different. For example, I could tell you to hit the subscribe button to help me reach 10,000 subscribers so I could start shaving again, but what you hear is to hit the like button and the notification bell. This means it's critical to keep all communications, plans, and processes as simple as possible to minimize confusion. Doing so will increase the likelihood that people will understand what they need to do and simultaneously decrease the possibility of mistakes. As a leader, there will be times when you will be overwhelmed by multiple urgent tasks that need to be done simultaneously. You must be able to stay calm in these situations and prioritize what is most important at that moment. Be decisive and make a plan to accomplish that task. It's always important to gather information, but during these times of high stress, gathering information may hinder your ability to move forward. Remember, there's almost never a 100% best way to move forward. So make a decision. Doing so will help you to gain control of the situation. However, it's important to understand that priorities can change. So be sure to give enough attention to what's going on around you so that you can pivot and resolve the next issue. As you're building a team, it's important to understand that you will only be able to effectively lead four to six people. So if you're placed in charge of more than that, then you should, as Jocko says, decentralize command. In essence, decentralizing command means making groups and subgroups with set leaders in charge of each. For example, you're in charge of five managers who are in charge of five supervisors who each have five people in their team. You can lead the managers who will lead the supervisors who will lead the frontline members. That way you can focus on the overall mission because you will have people you trust in place taking care of the details so that you don't have to constantly look over their shoulders and take control of the situation. Also, these leaders and subleaders should have parameters that they can work within without interference. This gives them the opportunity to exercise extreme ownership in what they're doing. For every mission you receive, you must create a plan to accomplish it. You can't effectively lead if you're just winging it, no matter how often it works in the movies. Winging it is often more complicated than not and leads to confusion, which goes against the principle of keeping things simple. By creating a plan, you're able to keep things simple, give guidance to your team, and help them find the best way to move forward in their individual roles. However, as leader, you shouldn't get bogged down in the details. Allow key experts to plan the details 
that will give you room to see the overall mission and find problems in the plan that they may be unable to see. After the planning is completed, brief your team. Make sure that they clearly understand both the why and the how of the mission. Also, if plans you create aren't approved by those up the chain of command, that's your responsibility as well. It's your job to lead up the chain of command by figuring out what information your leaders need to understand and know to approve your mission. It's also good to remember that your boss has a greater understanding of the overall mission than you do. So if something doesn't get approved, it may be because there's something more pressing that needs to be resolved. Now as a leader, there are often fine lines that you must walk. For example, you have to be confident but not cocky calm but not robotic, and exercise extreme ownership but execute decentralized command. If you aren't confident enough, your team won't follow you and you won't be able to make decisions and move forward. When things go wrong, you must be able to stay calm, but if you're robotic, then the members of your team will feel isolated and like you don't care about them. You must exercise extreme ownership in order to create change, growth, and accomplish the mission. But you must allow others to exercise extreme ownership so that they can create growth, change, and help accomplish the mission. Extreme ownership is the answer to every problem as a leader. Don't believe me? Start taking ownership for everything that affects your life and mission and see how you're able to take control of your circumstances and empower others to do the same.